This is a short video on how to perform the IPAC block, the block for the interspace between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee. Here are my disclosures and I'd like to mention the complete anatomy app by 3D4 Medical where I take many of my anatomical diagrams. I also want to give a shout out to the Block It Like It's Hot podcast with Jeff Gadsden and myself and these QR codes will take you to the knee episode where many of these concepts will be discussed. I'm going to discuss the indications for the IPAP block, the innovation of the knee in brief, to give you some scanning tips and then show you a couple of IPAP blocks. What is the indication for the IPAP block? Well, predominantly is part of knee arthroplasty regional anesthesia to target the pain felt by patients at the back of the knee and is often used in lieu of posterior capsule infiltration. The cutaneous innervation of the lower limb isn't really relevant to the IPAC block, so I'm going to focus on the osseous innervation. If we look specifically to the posterior aspect of the knee, you can see just what a significant contribution the sciatic nerve and the obturator nerve contribute to posterior knee innervation. This slightly complex diagram is taken from my main knee arthroplasty regional anesthesia talk, but I'm going to focus now just on the posterior aspect of the knee and you can see here that twigs or branches from the sciatic nerve along with the obturator nerve form the popliteal plexus and that innervate the posterior aspect of the knee. So let's have a look at the back of the knee in a bit more detail here. Of course the IPAP block stands for the interspace between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee and the reason we perform this technique is to target pain that people feel at the back of the knee after knee arthroplasty. There are a number of ways that we can take out the innervation of the posterior aspect of the knee. We can either do an IPAP block or surgical infiltration. And if we do a lateral insertion here, you can see that we've got to be cautious of that sciatic nerve when we're aiming to find that space between the femur and the popliteal vessels. Or we could approach from the medial aspect of the knee. Uh, and you can see here we've got to be careful of the blood vessels, including the long saphenous vein. The other alternative is that you perform a true adductor canal block and the rationale behind that is the superficial femoral vessels will dive through the adductor hiatus to go to the posterior aspect of the knee and if you deposit local anaesthetic at the point that the superficial femoral vessels are about to dive down the back of the knee, the local anaesthetic will follow those down uh, and it will actually take out the popliteal plexus from that aspect. Uh, so this is another option available to you. If you're going to scan for the IPAP block, scan down the back of the femur, come to the femoral condyles, come back up to the flat surface of the bone, compress and release to identify the popliteal vein and the popliteal artery. Once you've identified that, you can then identify the space where you can deposit your local anesthetic between those popliteal vessels and the posterior aspect of the femur. It is important, however, to make sure you make an effort to identify the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve so your needle path goes nowhere near them. Once you've identified that space, you're aiming to deposit local anaesthetic in that space between the popliteal vessels and the posterior aspect of the femur. Let's have a look and see how this might look in reality. You can imagine here we've got a patient lying in the lateral position with the operative side uppermost, or they could be supine with the leg elevated. Once you've done that, you then place a curved array probe to the back of the thigh, aiming to identify that sweet spot between the popliteal vessels and the posterior aspect of the femur. Then you bring a needle in plane, and if you're doing it like this, it's very similar to a popliteal sciatic nerve lock, but you want to make sure you go nowhere near the sciatic nerve, and you deposit local anesthetic in that zone. So what might that look like? Well, if you watch this video here, you can see that local anesthetic has been deposited, um, um, as the needle is inserted right the way through to the medial aspect of the knee and as the needle is being withdrawn, you can see local anesthetic is filling that space in that posterior capsule of the knee. Um, and that's a video from Jeff Gadsden just to demonstrate that. The alternative, of course, is that you have the patient with the, in the supine position. And at that point, all you do is you place a probe uh, at the medial aspect of the leg, scanning from inside out. Uh, and when, you, when you've got your probe in that position, you see the, the femur like a shelf. I'll show you that in a second. You can bring your needle in plane. It's actually quite a steep angle directed behind the femur. What does that look like in reality? Well, over here, you can see the shelf-like appearance of the femur as you're scanning. And the needle is dropping down in that gap between the femur 
and the um, superficial femoral slash popliteal vessels which you can see on the left hand side of that screen. Once you've got your head around the technique this is quite a nice way to perform the block. So to summarize there are three ways that we can take out um, pain at the back of the uh, knee after knee arthroplasty. You can perform a true uh, eye pack block uh, with a medial or a lateral insertion or you can perform a distal adductor canal block aiming to get local onset to follow those vessels down to the back of the knee. In terms of medication options, what choices do we have? Most of us will use either bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, or ropivacaine. Uh, and you don't need to use a strong solution. You can use a dilute solution of these uh, medications, but normally aiming to deposit between 10 to 20 mils. I hope you found that video useful.